Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, our uh, today's topic is about care and management of calves. Uh, yesterday, uh, we have discussed uh, the common terminology which is uh, being employed or used in uh, livestock management. So calves basically um, are, the, are, are basically uh, it, at the age of six to nine months or up to 12 months of age. Now, these can be uh, uh, male calves or female calves. Okay, uh, next, there are some practices which uh, must be applied to the calf. So today we are going to discuss those uh, uh, practices uh, which should be applied at this stage. Uh, <clears throat> this is the list of different uh, uh, management practices which we perform uh, for calves. Some of them are, uh, are like uh, uh, routine daily practices. Some of them are weekly basis or some of them are once in a lifetime or some are uh, on quarter basis. So these practices which we adopt or perform for calves, uh, just after the birth of the calf, the first and foremost uh, important practice is body weight measurement. Or uh, I would say the cleaning of uh, uh, basically, three practices should be performed immediately af after the parturition or immediately after the birth of the of the calves. The first one should be the cleaning, immediate cleaning. Uh, the second one should be navel cord cut, cutting. Okay, we can delay it, but the, uh, at second number should be the body weight measurement and navel cord cutting. These three uh, practices management practices as well are very important very much important starting from body weight measurement um, it is always important to check the weight of the calf after its birth because milk is to be given according to the body weight of the calf so you see um, the importance of a body weight measurement for calves as we have to uh, provide the colostrum colostrum um, to these calves according to their body weight. One important thing which is related to this uh, practice is that the <clears throat> provision of colostrum or milk to these calves. Provision of colostrum is important because colostrum contains a lot of uh, antibodies, immunoglobulins, which are useful for providing uh, immunity to these calves as these calves doesn't have uh, uh, immunity except for the innate immunity or, or, the, or, or the immunity which is being contributed by the dam or we also call it maternal immunity except for that uh, the calves doesn't have much much immunity so we have to provide them with the colostrum and colostrum must be fed uh, within uh, first uh, within first one day 20 or 12 to 24 hours as after 36 of hours the absorption of these immunoglobulins or antibodies in the stomach uh, uh, is completely uh, blocked in the intestine or GI tract of the calves. Therefore, uh, for better immunity of the calves, they should be um, fed with the colostrum you know, immediately after birth. But before we feed calves with the um, colostrum, uh, the body weight measurement is uh, very, very important. As we have to provide or feed or uh, uh, feed the calves on the basis of their body weight. And uh, starting from the birth, we should consider the milk or colostrum feeding to the calves 
as per uh, 10% of the body weight. For example, if uh, a calf is born with a body weight of, uh, for example, 20 kg, for example, uh, it means that the 10% of the colostrum or the milk would be provided to, to the calf. So, two liters or two kgs of colostrum should be fed for one week. Uh, after one week, you have to go uh, through the body weight measurement again, because body weight measurement is a practice which is performed on weekly basis. As you have to adjust the milk feeding uh, schedule according to the body weight of the cows. So body weight measurement is very, very important, at, especially at the farm level. Next is uh, basically uh, navel cord cutting. Navel cord cutting basically should be done in order to check or should be done uh, immediately, but there is a risk that the germs may get in uh, through these, the, the, through this uh, navel cord cutting or prune portion. Uh, for this, there is a proper method or procedure to perform this navel cord cutting. First of all, uh, the navel cord should be should be clipped using thread. I mean, you can tie the navel cord. Um, I would say starting leaving the length of the navel cord two to three inch of space from the belly portion and then you will tie it up with the with the thread or you will clip it why clipping uh, navel cord is important because uh, after we cut the lower portion lower portion of this navel cord the bleeding will not be too much or we can avoid too much bleeding from this portion Uh, furthermore, uh, <clears throat> after cutting, you can apply some disinfectant in order to uh, uh, avoid the risk of exposure of uh, uh, my, uh, my pathogens. So, navel cord cutting. After that comes uh, dehorning. Dehorning basically uh, once in life, uh, once in life practice for uh, which is performed at uh, almost uh, within one to two months of the life of, uh, of a calf. So we already know the horning is the removal of horns of an animal. So uh, technically, why would do this? The, pro the the basic objective of this practice is that when animals they fight with each other, uh, uh, they they get uh, injured badly. So in order to avoid unnecessary damage uh, to the animals, this practice is performed. Now there are different types of uh, uh, dehorners which are available in the market and in the field conditions. The first one is electrical dehorner, electrical dehorner, and then is uh, the mechanical dehorner, which is used in the procedure. <coughs> you will be visiting after the complete opening of the university. And I'll, uh, I'll show you all these equipments which are being used for the care and management of uh, animals at different physiological stages of their life. So uh, we have electrical dehorner for demonstration purpose. Yes, if you have animals here, we can do it uh, at, uh, in this vicinity. The dehorning can be performed here. But for that, we also need uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, uh, we can say that uh, we use some injections so that the animal could not uh, feel pain. Uh, anesthesia containing uh, elements. Next practice is extra teeth removal. Normally uh, or usually calves have four teeth but there may be some animals <coughs> sorry there may be some animals which are born with extra teeth and they should be these should be removed as soon as possible 
and after birth you can i mean have a 3 to 4 months to remove these extra teats <coughs> then the next practice is deworming deworming means uh you want to kill the worms which are present in the abdomen or belly of the of the calves it's a procedure in which sprays injections or powders are used to apply on to the calves to get rid of both type of parasites uh, basically uh, there are two types of parasites which are prevalent in uh, animals the ectoparasites which are present on the skin of the uh, of the animals and uh, some the second category is endoparasites they these are present in uh, in uh, in, uh, in the digestive gi tract of the animals so in order to get rid of these ecto and endoparasites uh, from uh, calf body uh, deworming is performed and it is recommended to perform after each 3 months i mean continuously we have to do it uh, in some cases um, at early stage uh, you can check get your animals or calves checked for uh, any any uh, parasites whether it is ecto or endoparasite uh, which is which you can observe from uh, the skin for ectoparasites and for endoparasites you can get your uh, animals or calves uh, feces analyzed for the presence of any sort of parasite so it 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 must be done to avoid any kind of uh, disease now cleaning <clears throat> cleaning is important because when the calf is born it must be cleaned especially uh, uh, after the birth immediately after the birth uh, its nostrils its whole body should be cleaned with a with a with a clean or uh, you know, towel so that uh, i mean animal start to breathe properly uh, actually uh, uh, under natural condition the dam starts to lick to lick the body of the calf ultimately leading towards the cleaning uh, of the uh, calf but you can perform it uh, artificially provision of milk replacer this is uh, uh, i would rather say that uh, an exceptional practice and is only applied only under the condition one or two conditions uh, if the dam that is the mother of the calf dies number one or it if it doesn't milk the calves then we need to provide the calves with calf starters or milk replacers in order to uh, meet the nutritional requirement of the body of the calf so that the calf could grow properly therefore milk replacers are i mean provided to calves in these two conditions <clears throat> now uh, about the composition of different milk replacers um we can uh, provide the animals with the milk replacers i i i would i have two formulations here uh, which i want to share with all of you uh, we can add uh, barley at the rate of 32% linseed bean 30% dry milk 35% ground bones 1.5% salt 1% and antibiotics 0.5% now these antibiotics antibiotics are being added in this formulation not only uh, to avoid uh, the uh, as a prevention preventive measure not for the control or the treatment of the diseases prevention of disease in the animal and uh, prevention of any sort of production of uh, we can say the germs in in the in this milk replacer Uh, second formulation contains ground corn 20% soya bean 13% dry milk 50% whey protein uh, almost 14% ground bone 1.5% uh, 
salt 1% and antibiotics 0.5%. Basically, uh, <coughs> these two uh, or three components are common in both the formulations like ground bones, that is 1.5%, salt 1% and antibiotics 0.5%. So that was all uh, for today's lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure because I'm not feeling well. I could have conveyed it very well to you. Anyhow, thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, okay. <laughs>